part of this podcast and what we're exploring is, is it even possible to transform work culture, right? So we brought in the aspect of, um, you know, if you think about there's a payoff in management if you do just enough to be above average, you know, pretty good, right? You know, be pretty good. And for the learning curve to not excel, right? Or, you know, accelerate or whatnot, just be right there. There's a payoff. You know, you, everybody's had a boss that like, you felt like, man, it feels like I just do a little bit more than them. I know more than them, but they're there, right? So you can't do too much because then they know how to, you know, so there's a payoff for it being exactly the way it is, right? So I, I bring that up because that's a dynamic that even when you want change to happen in the workplace, um, you know, be it technology, be it um, just the way humans connect, there's a payoff for it staying the way that it is. So can it really transform? Can it really transform? That's what I'm interested to hear. And like all the guests we have coming up uh, in these conversations, I'm a bit skeptical. I'm optimistic from one perspective because I come from entertainment, right? And I, I know what happens when people connect. doesn't matter what you're trying to do. Once you connect and you, you find that shared interest, you'll change your perspective. Sometimes it's uh, only instant and needs to happen a few times. And sometimes it's like almost life changing, right? So I know that that can happen. But even when it does happen, there's a payoff for it staying the same. So that's the part that really like, uh, you know, <laughs> that I, I'm interested in as a conversation. And we, again, we haven't even talked about the diversity within the workplace and how does that factor in with the technology, with the learning curve, with the different personalities. Are we, are we making too much of diversity because there's already too much or are we not making enough? And I'm going to toss that to you, Michelle. <laughs> A light question. <laughs> well, uh, as the white lady at the table, I, I'm not sure I'm really perfectly uh, set up to talk about this. So I'll, I'll invite the rest of y'all to, to comment. But um, I mean, you, you covered so many things in, in the lead up to, to, the softball you you just threw me. <laughs> um, <Basketball. laughs> yes. Um, so I mean, obviously, my answer to this is yes. We need more diversity in the workplace. And as you two were talking, I was thinking about, you know, you can work twice as fast and and get home to your family. And um, you know, some of the problems that can be solved to you know move things ahead. I think that the evolution is going to be about bringing us to our humanity, right? So can we get it so that the work gets done? Maybe the organoid intelligence or something else will bust up what you just described, where the managers are sort of like keeping the people down. It was sort of like the disruption when, you know, we became sort of an information-based economy. Well, that's now going to be disrupted. So will we have the same kinds of power dynamics or are those going to change? I think they're going to change. Mm -hmm. How? I don't know. But I do think that we are moving towards, uh, you know, more of a focus on humans for lots of different reasons. The social awakening that's happening um, from sort of a, a racial and economic standpoint is, is kind of like there's a groundswell happening there, even though there's a lot of backlash now as well. And some of these technologies, you know, this isn't really a tech podcast necessarily, but we're kind of on that topic. I think some of these technologies, if used wisely and creatively, maybe put some human brains on that thing, um, could actually, like I say, serve us. It, it could be something that could lay the groundwork for something new and different to happen and not just be the same old story, the same old capitalistic story that we're all used to with the different flavor of the month. You know, um, And I do think that the people who are you know, I, my heroes are, are the grassroots activist types who are reimagining the world. And I, I think that the work that they're doing underground right now, it doesn't get a lot of press, it doesn't get a lot of play, but it's there and it's happening. That, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, marrying tech with that work is going to happen, maybe. Um, but I, I do think that sort of the human focused piece of what we're talking about could be like just the right moment of the right 
these two things kind of ripening at the same time, kind of coming together, could be something really exciting. It is that time right now, um, and that's a good point. The people who are doing the actual work, and you just talked about activists, right? And Joe, you talked about some of the kids that we talked about in the program. Bringing those kids' brain to what's happening right now yes. is essential. Yes. Because otherwise, well, the good thing is, first, the, the good thing is that the learning curve for um, AI right now is not steep because all you have to do is bring your mind to it yeah. and you need to question it and explore. That's that's really what's required on the base level to make an impact, right? If uh, that does not happen, then what happens is um, the world, we all, are allowing those folks who traditionally always have been at the forefront of everything to either A, co-opt the message, uh, co-opt the inputs, co-opt everything, right? So the real opportunity right now is for those folks who um, maybe don't necessarily have the voice, right? But they have the brain and they're willing to do the, the work. Get them on this technology like right now, right? Let them talk about what they see what problems they're actually having. Because then what could happen is the actual problems that need to be solved actually start getting solved. Mm -hmm. Not someone finds out how to solve them and then uh, essentially just uh, 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 controls the, the, the amount of time, it, you know, the, its progress, mm -hmm. right? So it, it just, this is happens in technology all the time. Like, oh, we found this out. Okay, well, we're going to go through all these stages. First, we're going to charge you uh, $3,200 for a gig, like what I paid for, a, for, I think, one gig back in the day when we first got Pro Tools. <laughs> I think it cost us $3,200 for a gig, right? So, and then it just keeps going on, right? Whereas if... Now it's, now it's $32 for a terabyte. Exactly. Right. So, so, so imagine like right now you get folks who are really trying to solve problems, who are doing the work, who have some solutions, get their minds on this stuff. Now, the rate at which they're finding out how to uh, progress or solve these problems can exceed, you know, and, and surpass those gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's a real opportunity. Of course, those gatekeepers will then change the game to sure. look it's, at it's who getting kids who, in tech, right? I, I mean, yeah. that's what it boils down to. I, I think if, if if the focus remains solving problems, I'm like so with you. If the focus is, you know, getting them into tech so that they can become other machines, that, that's what I think we need to be careful about, right? So for them to write their own tickets, solve the, solve the problems, like be the leaders, yes, absolutely. But I worry that we end up sort of pushing kids into, and I'm mm -hmm. a parent, I'm guilty of this, you know, pushing kids into something that we, we know will work for the world we're in. We have a responsibility for setting them up to be successful in the world we actually live in while trying to, you know, respect their humanity and, and, you know, allowing them to blossom as the people that they are. So I, I think humans do have a propensity to solve problems. I'm hungry. I'm going to go find some food, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I'm lonely. I'm going to find a friend. Like those, those are instinctual things that I think need to be fed. Um, but solving problems as in, let me create a need and then I can fill it. Like, ew, I don't like that.